NRL Hunter Series. What is it? What does the format look like? And how to prepare for it? Now it's similar, in my opinion, to some of the other field matches I've done, uh, Team Safari, or some of them that I'm about to go shoot, like the Vortex Sniper Challenge. However, just like any other type of shooting, I'm sure there's some things that we need to know that we may not be training for. So I'm gonna bring on a good friend of mine. He is the lead instructor at JP's Blue Steel Ranch, Brian Whalen. He has shot multiple matches of the NRL Hunter, NRL Hunter Series, and he has a course at Blue Steel Ranch where you can go sit down there for three days, train with him, and learn more about how to prepare for this style match. So we're gonna get him onto a Zoom call. We're gonna to try to get into all the good details and give you guys the information you need to succeed. Hey, Brian, how's it going, big guy? Good, how you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. All right, so for everybody at home watching this, uh, this is Brian Whalen, lead instructor of uh, JP's Blue Steel Ranch. How long have you been doing that? Oh, I think we're going on six years, maybe? Something like that, I don't know. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you have shot, I mean, you've been shooting long range for years. Um, I mean, that was your profession, like you got paid to do that. Uh, right. in, in the military, and, and now you've kind of taken all of your skills that you learned there, brought them out um, in your training, but you're also traveling around shooting competitively. I've spent a lot of time myself training with you, and mm -hmm. one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is NRL Hunter Series has really blown up. I mean, it, it, they introduced it last year. It blew up so much where it seems like every match you do with NRL now is a Hunter Series style match. Is that correct? Um, there's a lot, I, I think they're moving in the direction of primarily being a Hunter Series style match. Okay. One day events that are a little bit different. I'm not sure exactly what's on those yet. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I, I think that's the direction they're heading in, which I think is great. I, I really like the match format. It, um, it actually is, I think one of the original matches of that kind of format, not exactly that format, that kind of format is the, uh, the Steel Safari. I think that's probably one of the original real field matches with blind stages and all that stuff. And um, I've been shooting that since, I don't know, 2007, maybe. That's that's my favorite format overall, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I'm going to shoot Steel Safari this year. And we can get into that a little bit more. You know, I shot Team Safari for the first time last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the viewers at home that are interested in the NRL Hunter series, what does that look like? Where, you know, I, I'm curious too. I, I, it seems like it may be similar to like the Vortex Sniper Challenge, maybe Mammoth, a little bit of Team Safari, uh, but they, it seems like they applied it more to try to bring in a crowd of hunters. I mean, you got different divisions and yeah. <clears throat> like, can you, can you get into some of those details? Sure. Um, so there's three different categories. You've got uh, factory, you've got light, and then you've got heavy open. Um, and of course, they're you know different weight guns uh, and a different you know style of rifles basically. But uh, like the heavy class is limited by 16 pounds. Your your rifle has to weigh under 16 pounds. Um, the cool part about it though is once again it's blind stages. Uh, you walk up, you've got four minutes on the clock. You got to find the targets. You got to Laze them. Finding them is, always, is a lot of times a challenge as well. You got to find them. You got to laze them. You got to figure out what position you're going to shoot or what positions. Um, the target engagements are broken down to kind of like three different scenarios. We either have one target from four positions, or you'll have two targets from two positions, or you'll have uh, one tar or one position, four targets. So you got to find them. You got to once again figure out what position you're going to shoot and how you're going to do it, and then you got to execute it, make a win call. Uh, if you miss with your first round, you get one re-engagement shot, and then you got to move on to the next target. First round hits worth two points. Uh, second round hit is worth one point. So to me, it's really, uh, you know, all the matches, in my opinion, have been kind of trying to mimic or trying to find reality in the shooting, right? Trying to get back to like, you know, really a lot of it comes down to hunting or sniping. And okay. uh, this format to me is as close as you can get to to those things as far as the shooting skills go the field craft of it uh finding the targets is a skill and when when guys don't have an organized way of doing that or um they're not used to looking for things that don't belong in nature uh then you know that's a challenge so yeah 
Now you can shoot these matches as a team or individually. Um, or some of, some of them are because like uh, I know uh, match down in Iowa is I'm signed up to shoot it as a team, but I've heard that that you, some guys like Adam Burt is shooting that as an individual. Uh, that may be the case. I couldn't tell you okay. uh, from you know educated perspective. Um, I know that there's more team matches popping up of different sorts. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see the NRL um, having a team division for uh, for that match. Okay. Now, how many of these matches have you shot? Uh, four of them, maybe, including the okay. finale last year. All right. So you I haven't, got, got, I haven't been able to get out and shoot any this year so far. So you've got enough experience to break it down for me. So what does it look like on day one? I show up to shoot the match. Like, what does that look like day one from the beginning? How, how, how do we get into this? Um, when you first show up, of course, you got to, you know, do waivers and safety brief and all that stuff. Um, you got to find out about the range and what to do and what not to do. Um, after that, then you're going to, they're going to kind of give you the, the idea of how to get to where you're going, what the, uh, the stage layout looks like. Like, Hey, we got, Hey, we've got one down there on the far left. And then stage 12 for the day is going to be on the far right. And when you get to the end of stage 12, you're going to double back to stage one, depending on where you started. Okay. Yada, yada, yada. They're going to read you on. They're going to break you down into squads who you're shooting with. Now, even though you're shooting with a squad, um, you're still shooting a blind stage. So a lot of times you're not going to be able to see uh, the targets, maybe even the firing position. Um, the finale last year, we were, you know, over a cameo and we were running up the hill to, to get to the firing position. I don't know about running, you know, Running ish, you know, 20, 30 yards, you had to move up the hill. Yeah. Uh, it was a reminder that I haven't done much cardio in a while. <laughs> uh, so they, they give you the breakdown of how everything's going to play out for the day. Then you break down your squads, you move your starting stage. And then um, when it's your turn to shoot, uh, the RO will say, Hey, you ready to go? And yep, shooter ready, stand by, go. The four minute starts, you uh, move to the start first firing point. Um, they'll uh, usually, before you go to shoot the stage, There'll be a placard at the holding area and I'll say, Hey, this is a one by four or a four by one or okay. whatever it is. And, uh, you know, I think the last year there was a lot of different stuff kind of going on. And I think they were kind of figuring it out, uh, there should by the first target be a placard, you know, giving you uh, the stage number or whatever. Okay. Um, it's by the, the target, meaning within like 10 yards, maybe. Um, just because you can see the placard doesn't mean that you can easily see the target. Right. So uh, you're going to have an idea from that holding area what you're, you know, you're going to run up and you go, okay, well, I've got to shoot rams or I've got to shoot deer or, you know, coyotes or something. Okay. And they'll tell now, you the, go ahead. Before, before we go any farther, just for anybody watching at home, they may not know what a one by four is. Can, can you break that down? Uh, what a one, because the first time I learned what that really was, was that team safari last year. So can you break right. that down for the audience? What a one by four is? Uh, it's gonna be one position, four targets. Right, and then like a so two by four, looking, a yeah, two by two four would be two positions, four targets, right? Yep, something like that. Okay. Yep, and then a uh, a four by one is one target, four positions. Got it. Okay. So yeah, um, so yeah, so you'll you'll have an idea of what all that's gonna be, and then uh, the RO will you know get you started, you'll get up to the firing point, and then at that point, uh, really a lot of time management, um, which is kind of challenging for newer shooters. And the idea kind of with the Hunter series too, was like you said, to draw the hunting community in. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you've got to understand how much time you're allotting for what, if you only find three targets and there's four at a certain point in time, you got to start shooting them. Uh, you may have only, you know, you don't get any points for finding three targets, but you get points for hitting three targets. Right. Yeah. So you got to manage your time. Now, how much time do I have between stage one and stage two? Like, do I have to run? Am I, is there a time limit? No, no it's, um, you know, at Cameo, we actually used uh, side-by-sides to move from, you know, big movements from stage uh, to stage. So, or, so it really is like hunting, right? Like, I've got a guide that's going to drive me to the next stage and all that? <laughs> it's just somebody <laughs> from the squad would grab the side-by-side -side and move it, yeah. Uh, unless we're making a big movement, and then we'd all hop in the side-by-side -side and go. Yeah, okay. Uh, a lot of them, uh, you're walking. Uh, it's usually but, not real far between stages. So it's just I mean, like like Team Safari where we would walk from one stage to the next. I mean, we're not taking our time, but we were Yeah, you're walking. not on the clock for it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're not on the clock. I would say that um, from the ones that I've shot so far, I would say the Safari is still, you know, 
more walking. Yeah. Okay. Cool. A lot more walking. Yeah. Um, so there's power factor. Yep. So my six you, creed more in like my two, two, three, they're out. I can't run any of them. out. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to have, um, a minimum power factor of, uh, 380,000. And the way you, you figure that out is you take uh, your bullet weight. So I've got a 140 <clears throat> and then I would need that to be going 2,714 feet per second. So if you take 140, multiply it by 2714, that comes out to about 380,000. So at the beginning of the match, don't be surprised when they chronograph you and weigh your rifle. Okay. Um, so you, you have to meet that power factor. Now, the one caveat to that is if you're shooting factory 6.5 Creedmoor ammo, then that gets you past the power factor thing. Right. So okay. There, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I but looked it, into it. I did the math. My six Creedmoor. There's no way I can I can make power factor with it. No, not staying underneath the speed limit. Yeah. No. You know. It, and I, think, I look. Yeah. <laughs> most most of the matches they they want you, thirty two hundred feet per second or under to not destroy the steel. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. there was yeah when I looked at that there was no way I could do it. All right. Um, yeah. What is the what does the round count usually look like for this? And is there any pistol? Uh. Nope. It's purely long gun. Okay. Um, no, purely, uh, yeah, your, your match rifle. Uh, so usually I've been running around 100 rounds match. Okay. Um, so and let's two, say there's... There are two-day matches? Usually, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, everyone that I've been to has been a two-day match. So let's say there's 25 to 30 stages. Um, you would possibly need eight rounds per stage. So that would, you know, let's say 30 stages at eight rounds a stage. That's... Uh, Eight times thirty. You don't end up shooting nearly that many rounds. Right. Okay. So, yeah. What's the uh, closest distance I'll engage a target at? Uh probably about two hundred yards. But the good majority of them are somewhere between from the matches that I've been doing anyway. Call it three to eight hundred. Okay. And then so my my farthest is at eight hundred, or they may push it out a little. No, farther. I think I think everything's pretty much supposed to be a thousand and in. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you got to know your dope, right? So, you know, having yep. a Kestrel, having the range finders, being able to do everything. Yeah. On, yeah. Now, you're, uh, you're a huge fan of running paper target, like running a paper dope card, not electronics. So you you do all your stuff in the morning for that? Uh, well, you don't know what your target range is going to be until you get to the stage. So um, most, most of the guys are running uh, a data card. Yep. Um, I have a quarterback playbook and then I've got my data on one side and then I write down like I open um, like a an office max you know office label you know mm -hmm. a file label you know, it's like two by three inches whatever I write down my distances on that and I stick that on my sidewinder and then from there I can cross-reference the the ranges whatever you're doing you got to be quick yeah. um, once again I love the you know ballistic software is absolutely a huge awesome way of doing things um, it's really empowering for building good, solid, accurate data. Um, the fastest way that most of the guys I know that have found do it successfully is running a data card of some sort. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Paper data. You, know, you, yeah. you base a density altitude, you pull your cash flow out now and then you, you check your density altitude to make sure that you're on the right card. Okay. Um, there are some guys who I think are using their laser range finder as well, uh, to just give them the data. So they'll laze it, um, and they'll, they'll just write down the data for that target. Uh, other guys, they may be using the Kestrel HUD, the heads up display that goes on the rifle. That's what I'm uh, using. Yeah. Are you, and are, are you able, you're able to make heavy weight with that? Yeah. 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 And that, uh, that's a completely viable way of doing it if, if you can keep track of everything. Well, so. I'm glad you brought that up because that's something to take into is that your rifle your rifle weight is everything that you would actually use on the stage for your shots, right? So if I'm running a heads up display, so that's a Kestrel heads up display, blue, mm -hmm. Bluetooth for my Kestrel in there with a the data card and my ranges and everything. That's gotta be on there when it's weighed. My optic, uh, my bipod, if I'm running any bag weights or anything like that, that all has to be on the yeah, rifle. Yeah, you're not gonna be running weights on this. Well, on right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So um, yeah, everybody uh, kind of, you know, the goal is to, like, I don't do a lot of hunting. There's a lot of guys that are, you know, serious hunters and they want to bring out their hunting rifle. And the idea is to get hunters out with their hunting rifle for it. Um, so, you know, if the guy's running a custom rifle, a lot of times you'll get, uh, you know, a shorter stainless or a smaller contour barrel or a carbon fiber barrel. They're going to be running lighter stocks. Because, yeah. you know, let's face it, 
um, a lot of the the open guns that we're shooting in other matches, they weigh 23 pounds, you know, six mm -hmm. millimeter or 23 pounds. Yeah. Um, that's just not a realistic hunting rifle for the, you know, where you're huffing it at all. So uh, like I said, the, the weight on the heavy class is 16 pounds. Um, the light class is 12 and then factory. I don't remember, to be honest with you, what the rules are around factory, but it's got to be a factory, right? Yeah. There. So I do know um, they've got, they, and they have a list of what rifles can be ran for factory. Say again? They have a list of like, these rifles are qualified for a factory rifle. Right. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you look Rusty Ulmer, he's, I'm pretty sure he's won a uh, hunter series match, even from factory class. So it, it really, uh, you know, the guns these days are doing it. Yeah. Um, so within that weight, uh, pretty much anything, like if I've got a sling, it's got to be part of the weight. I'm running a suppressor, my can cover. Um, I'm running an APAC chassis and a, and a Night Force attacker. Um, you know, I got a, a Thunder Beast Gen 2 Ultra 965 can on there and a Skypod. Yeah. So, um, you know, all that managed. Now, I had to be really careful. I didn't want to buy a carbon fiber barrel. Uh, I just wanted a gun that was going to be multidimensional. I wasn't just just for this this series of matches i wanted to be able to shoot uh, other stuff with, with it as well so i ended up going with a shorter like 22 and a half inch barrel that was heavily fluted um and i really like it i gotta be honest with you it wouldn't break my heart if a lot of the other match type stuff out there kind of brought back the reality of of a uh, a lighter rifle and i don't want to say light like 16 pounds some people are going to say that hey that's not light i got it but you know, a 23 pound rifle is, is kind of, if it's not a big boomer, that's kind of really pushing the, the practical, uh, you know, weight of a rifle. So mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, I get it for yeah. sure. I, I, I like the idea. I look, I came from three gun. I kind of like having some rules with the divisions and you don't show up and everybody's just in the open division, right? Like bring what yeah. you got. I, I, I like to have a little bit, uh, you know, keep some things a little bit more realistic. Uh, yeah. change it around and and then you can let people pick what they want to shoot and what that looks like for them yeah. but you can be and competitive me, yeah. you can be competitive in a very specific uh division and i like that yeah and i gotta be honest with you at 16 pounds and i'm like right on the money i like shooting the rifle i feel like it's light enough that i could you know if i needed to to legitimately hunt long range it's it's accurate enough and it's light enough and it's ergonomically adjustable enough that i feel like i uh I could do well with it. And I, like I said, I like shooting it. It's kind of funny actually when, um, when uh, Matt and the guys at engineering were working on the APAC, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when the first product came out, Matt's like, yeah, we got it down to this weight. And I'm like, Oh no. I mean, guys, you know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, man, we, everybody's moving heavier. Now they're putting weights on the guns and this, that, and the other thing. And then, then the Hunter series came out and I'm like, this is what this is perfect for. Yeah. 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 It's a really nice, nice weight and, and everything for that. That's awesome. Still now, like all right, my last question on the NRL Hunter series, and I want to kind of shift into the training that you oh. offer, but is this something where you, we've got to stay the night on there or does everybody load up and go back to the hotel room? Yeah, they their go back wounds? to the hotel room. Okay, so I can go to my hotel room, lick my wounds and come back tomorrow? Yeah. I think, um, I think Competition Dynamics is running a uh, Hunter series match that's one of the cool things about uh, about some of these matches is that every match director kind of gives it its own flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Competition Dynamics in conjunction with uh, the NRL is running a walk and shoot match. So it's really going to be, uh, I think there's two divisions. One, you go home at night and maybe the other one, maybe not. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. I haven't read up on it, but. Yeah, they're I, having I that, uh, they're running that at Cameo. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you're uh, you're rucking the whole thing, and yeah. I want to say that I want to say it's a camp overnight kind of thing. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's cool. I'm interested in that for sure. Yeah, um, that's pretty cool. All right. So I, I mean, I know there's a lot of other details, but I mean, people can go shoot the match and, and learn a little bit more about some of that stuff that goes into it. I I want to talk about um, you're you are now doing some training that will prepare people for the NRL Hunter Series style matches. Yep. And I, I actually, I run the, the class as a combined concept kind of thing. Um, it's a combination of uh, Steel Safari, which is, my opinion, kind of the original um, hunting, I mean, Steel Safari, yeah. you know, Safari. The idea is that you 
you're walking down the trail and you see animals that you're going to shoot and you know you've got to blindly find them laze them and work out all of your stuff in a reasonable amount of time um and then the, the nrl hunter stuff which is you know is another animal but they're they're pretty much they're very very similar okay the skills the field craft um what i like about the matches is, is the field craft it really um brings it back to the reality of, of why we're shooting what we're simulating and all that stuff so i, I run the to the the class as a combined concept of both training you up for a competition dynamics match as well as a hunter series or and, and there's other you know matches that are key matches that are you know a similar sort of comp you know concept where you gotta walk up and you gotta find your targets and all that they're blind stage matches mm -hmm. I, I think it's really designed to to help people with that blind stage real field match kind of thing okay yeah. uh when, when do you have those do you do you have the schedule right in front of you or are we going to just put you on I the spot i don't have the schedule right in front of me right, we'll we'll post um, we'll have we'll have uh we'll have it posted below then for yeah the actual schedule. i know i've got one coming up in may and now i believe the next one is coming up in uh uh november okay so and that's is that a that's a three-day course people come out they go to three -day course yeah yep so they're gonna go to logan new mexico down to jp blue steel ranch mm -hmm. yep. um now they can stay on site or right. they can actually stay at a hotel somewhere around there. Um, yeah. I, I, I highly recommend staying on site. You get a lot, there's a lot more, um, come on, come on. I can't pronounce the word. Uh, experience. Yeah, well, it's experience, but there was another word I was looking for. I lost it. So we'll move on. Camaraderie. Thank you. You know, me and words, I struggle sometimes and don't even go down that road. You can just zip it. But um, You can at least spell your words, though. I can't. <laughs> so, but no, I, I definitely recommend staying there. It's fun. You have a good time. There's a bunkhouse. The KD range is about 50 yards from uh, the bunkhouse, so you get a lot of shooting right there. Yeah. Um, are, do you do any type of positional stuff? Yeah, like... and it's, you know, it's one of my favorite classes to teach, actually, because there's the least amount of classroom, usually. Uh, sometimes, you know, obviously I've got guys that haven't been down to my training before. So I'm trying to get them caught up on the fly for how we manage wind or data or whatever. Um, but the idea is that we're spending as much time as possible, not even on the KD range, but on the rim out shooting. So pretty much as far as I'm concerned, if I have my drillers, um, we're going to confirm data on the confirm zero on the front range, confirm data on the KD range. And then at that point, we're, you know, trying to trying to maximize our rim time. Yeah. Now, um, this is just walking stages and shooting. This class is phenomenal for people that, let's say you don't want to shoot competition. You just want to, to excel in your hunting. Yeah. This is a class that's definitely going to help you excel in your hunting by coming out there and learning Absolutely. really what your rifle can do. Yeah. And um, I've had some guys, well, that's a small part of hunting. Well, uh, it's, I, I, I think it's a lot more part of hunting than, a lot of people think, but yeah, it, it's a great class for hunters because it's, once again, you're out in that three-dimensional real terrain. You're having to find your targets. We're talking about scanning techniques. Mm -hmm. We're talking about remembering where you're finding the targets or the animals, whatever, um, how to actually range them well. Cause a lot of people don't, Oh, I got a laser range finder. It's going to be easy. Well, no, no, it's not always easy. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, you saw some of that. Yeah. It's yeah. not always easy. And then we know, you know, hunting uh, very rarely are you going to go prone. Right. So putting you in, in shooting scenarios where you've got three dimensional terrain that you've got to work, you know, work around and, you know, it's uh, really shooting is about mm, only 40 or 50% of the, of the things that you're working on that you've got going on there. There's yeah. a lot more big picture stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's really applicable for hunters. Yeah, I agree. I, um, I, I've been talking to some people about hunting and, you know, I've watched some, uh, these guys go out hunting and they're filming their, their stuff and, um, they get out there, they see the big, you know, they see the elk that they want, they take the shot, and it was a bad mm -hmm. shot, they don't know why, they're like, ah, I was so nervous to the trigger, and I'm like, you know, if you guys would spend more time behind your rifle, actually training, spend a little bit more time in the gym, and spend some time at some competition where you have to learn how to work with the nervous, you know, your nerves kicking in, and, yep. you know, the adrenaline, you would be a much better hunter. Yeah. Yeah, so. I've had quite a few guys. Um, my last one, uh, for example, um, that was the first time one of my students who was really in classes for the purpose of hunting better. Um, and I, lo I love it when we get hunters out there because 
I think they realize or they they leave the class with a realistic engagement distance. Like, hey, what am and hopefully it's you know a further distance than they showed up as. But a lot of guys are are walking away from class like, hey, I can realistically hit you know with this rifle, this ammo, and myself in these environmental conditions. This is an ethical shot for me to take. Yeah, and that distance is getting pushed out further and further. Right. So then, on top of that, they come out to you know those other classes and they come to the the prep you know, the 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 NRL Hunter Series Steel Safari Prep class, and now it's like scenario driven, where it's not just the marksmanship of it, but it's like okay, you're walking along, you decide like, hey, I'm going to stop here, uh, or you know, where you see something, and you know, now you're in hunting mode, you know, and you have to go through the process of finding the things you've got to get your gear off. How am I managing my gear? Because you're when you're carrying your your stuff from stage to stage, there's a a reality check that comes in like how much stuff am i carrying do i need all this stuff yeah. do i need more stuff do how do i manage it like you know man I, I realized i didn't have my ammo handy or i didn't have this handy or that handy and i needed it yeah like i've got my rifle slung in this real you know i got my binos here on my chest is that a good thing or a bad thing you know yeah. you're getting the opportunity to spend a couple of days in a row working through that whole process it's interesting you, you bring that up i uh, I, I leave tomorrow uh, so by the time this runs i will actually be shooting a match or i've already shot a match but mm-hmm. i'm leaving tomorrow to go shoot vortex sniper challenge match and the mm-hmm. pack that i ran for team safari is completely different than what i'm running uh for mammoth and i, I was looking at that whole pack and i picked it up and i'm like man way heavier than what yeah. i ran at team safari but but the circumstances are different, right? I'm not I'm not at this match. We're not staying the night at this one. We're just gonna mm-hmm. go, you know, get our feet wet, see what everything we need, and then we're gonna next time we shoot, we're gonna be staying the night and everything. But right now, mm-hmm. it's like I want to test my gear, get an idea of the layout, what it's gonna look like, and then I can start game plan. But my my backpack is completely different. I, and you know, you you go to a, a regular open type match, um, like a regular NRL or PRS type match. Um, and it's a completely different loadout as well. Yeah. Right. A lot of times for those matches, um, you know, you get your squad together and it's like, okay, everybody throw your bag on the ground. All right. You take that one, you take that one, you take that one. And, you know, as a squad, you kind of have all the equipment you need sort of thing. You can, Hey man, can I borrow that bipod for this stage? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. No problem. Hey, can I borrow your tripod? You know, you've got to really write stuff. I've got this one. Yeah. Um, whereas this, you know, you're, you're kind of more out on your own kind of thing. And then of course, like mammoth, you're really out on your own. Yeah. There's no going, there's no running back to your car at night or, you know, man, tomorrow I'm going to make sure I bring the, you know, that piece of kit instead of this one. You, you so, can. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. All right. Well, where can uh, everybody find the classes? Um, on the JP website, the blue steel ranch website. Yep. Um, as well as on the, the, the JP first go to the JP website for the blue steel ranch. Um, and then that'll send you over to my website for uh, actually enrolling in classes. Okay. You know? um, of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Um, 910-257-0848. Um, you, want repeat, the, you want to repeat that again so they don't have to rewind? Just one more time. Yeah, it's uh, 910-257-0848. Awesome. Yep. And that should be on the Blue Steel Ranch uh, webpage as well. Okay, cool. Now, if anybody wants to follow your shenanigans of selling a boat or out shooting a rifle, is there a place that they can go to keep track of you and everything you're doing? (laughs) Uh, You know, I'm pretty horrible with social media. (laughs) I uh, (laughs) sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I mean, there's my Facebook page, but I randomly post there. Okay. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. I think, uh, I think, Company wise, we're really getting to the point where, uh, you know, a lot of the the students that we're getting are word of mouth. Yeah. You know, between the social media that JP is doing and and word of mouth kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I took PR one, PR two. I want to take PR three with you. I want to do the NRL hunter thing. I've done a carbine class. You offer a carbine class. So mm-hmm. uh, check. Yeah, everybody just needs to go to um, jprifles.com or to uh, what was it Blue Steel Ranch dot org yep. i believe it is yeah they go there check that out we'll put all the links below but you offer a lot of classes i highly recommend taking them with you and then uh you're gonna be at uh, still safari yes awesome well i'll see you there um and okay. until then dude best of luck on the range man and thanks for coming on thanks man you too
have a have fun with the match. Yeah, I will. I'm gonna I'll cry and I'll let you know about it. <laughs> Be safe driving around, man. That's a lot of driving you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot. But right on. Yeah. All right, man. Well, it's good seeing you. Yeah, you too. Take care. Thanks. All right, later. All right. So the NRL Hunter Series, as the name says, it's really designed for guys that are wanting to get into hunting. That doesn't mean people like myself and other competitive shooters can't go out there and compete. But it does seem like it's built more to get the average person, the guy that just wants to increase his hunting skills, to show up with that actual rifle he's going to use. You know, maybe just bought it from a shop, threw an optic on it, and now he wants to go learn how to, you know, shoot under pressure, get a little bit more training in. I'd definitely say right now, from the sounds of it, this is the direction for you to go. Now, there's also the BSR class where you can go take more training on that. And that's really exciting. I've taken a lot of classes with Waylon and I love them. For me personally, looking at the NRL Hunter series, it is exciting because it, it kind of goes back to more of a squad style. So I'm gonna get to hang out with a lot of people in between stages. We're gonna get to chat a lot and talk, maybe get some helpful hints on how to engage targets a little better or how to approach a stage a little bit more competitively. And I like that. I, I kind of miss that from the three gun stages. And I have gotten away from that with the field style matches. So pretty excited about that. All that's left now is actually just getting my gear, getting my teammate going down and, and shooting a match and having fun. Uh, I do have to figure out what I'm going to do on a rifle, which I've got an idea. I do have the JP APAC chassis that I bought last year. And I have a Bagara and a 6.5 Creedmoor. We're going to drop it in there. That's going to keep my weight low so I'll be able to pick between two different divisions. I will make power factor with a 6.5 Creedmoor and I'm going to probably just run that thing pretty bare bones not go crazy because I want to take that rifle later this year and go out to Colorado and do an elk hunt. So uh, the NRL Hunter Series with my JP, APAC, the Bagara and uh, a nice Vortex Optic on there should do everything I need. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. hope you got the information you needed and I'll see you guys at the range.